Tina, yes. Um, I just have to make a rhetorical comment, maybe, because am I clear enough? Can you hear me? Yeah, no, I know. No, please. Okay. So um, I just want to make a rhetorical comment because um, just like you mentioned in the end that um, there's always a trade-off and when you're increasing the biodiversity, you have to think about all the other possible things that come with it. So for example, if I would take example of the South Asian regions and when you're talking about the unprecedented climatic change um, and we have this, for example, in Pakistan and in India, we have this massive problem of locust swarms. Mm -hmm. And that is like, you know, the massive uh, pest infestation which has like call, um, called out for massive deterioration of almost like 20 to 40 percent of the crop loss. Um, and I was thinking about it because it's like a conundrum in the sense that you have on one side, you are seeing locusts to be like the source of protein and as a, also a reason of biodiversity. But at the same time, it's also causing loss for the farmers. So um, yeah, maybe just a question of how this could be resolved or what could be done in such areas which are prone to humidity because for locusts, these uh, grounds which are moist and have rain fed drains, it's like their uh, feeding grounds. So it's, it's a problem that is, that will persist and it depends on climate change. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know that much about that problem, but for sure it's, um, the problem is partially caused by climate change. And I haven't talked about that, but climate change is, it's a huge issue for um, the sustainability of agriculture because of course, uh, in some areas, agriculture is no longer going to be possible just because it's going to be too dry or too hot. And you have this locust problem. Um, my, my, my feeling is that, um, okay. Um, I think that in some cases, I'm not sure it's the case for this locust, but in some cases, the problem is also caused by the cropping systems themselves and, and by the way we have behaved with ecosystems uh, in the sense that very often um, simplified ecosystems with less biodiversity and simplified landscapes will favor the invasion by such, uh, such pests. But I, I'm not fully sure for, for locusts. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I think um, my, I, don't know if, I don't know how to get rid of locusts, probably it's impossible. Um, but my philosophy would be that we have to uh, decrease uh, the use of pesticide, for example. But at some times, if just one year we need pesticide to get rid of something, I'm saying why not? I mean, it's not very good, but it's kind of trade-off. And um, first you have to think about yeah, whether your, your locust infestation is due to the simplification of your cropping system, the simplification of the landscape. But at some point, if you really need some pesticide, yeah, why not? OK, I'm Federico. Thank you for the presentation. And <coughs> I'm going to take my, my mask just to. Yeah, thank you. She asked a question about why didn't we just change if this agriculture was good? Then you gave some political, technical, and historical explanations. But you also say it could be possible. And if we add to that the thing that we have to stop eating so much meat and replacing some other uh, harvests that are not for food, etc. So let's say it's possible. Yeah. And let's say, you, as, as you put an example, that when you talk to the president, and you go and you, you, you speak with the president, and he believes you. No? In your experience, which, in terms of public policies, are the ones that should be implemented first? It's okay, it's possible. Okay. What are the public policies that should be implemented? Uh, is it a centralized agriculture? Is it education for agriculture? Is it education to consumers? Is it investment to, like, what are the public policies that most important? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, okay, I, I, th I think we always, I mean, we, I think